What is going down, everyone? It's time for the hype episode number 161, and we have a special guest today coming up. We're going to be interviewing Card Collector 2. He's got 40,000 followers on Instagram. We talk about his life as a card shop owner. We talk about the basketball hobby, lots of stuff. So great interview coming up later in the show. We're going to talk a little bit about Rob Kardashian. Yeah, Rob Kardashian. And we're going to kick off the show talking about Prism WNBA. Dan, what's going down? What's up? I, you, you know, you said we have, you always have a special guest on the show. You have me and C-Rad. What's That's up? True. I am well, fortunate we're to sit next to you guys. We're special. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are hosts. You're not guests. Oh, it's not my show. I, th- I thought it was show your too. show. We're just, we're just here. We're, uh, we're supporting cast. Supporting cast. We're, uh, we're like the, we're like the Rondo. You're LeBron James. <laughs> C-Rad, how do you, uh, how do you back up your uh, Tom Brady talk from last week? Tom Brady? Yeah. Um, Never I was him. pulling for you, man. I really was. Not more like to see the Tom Brady lose. Man, I hate Tom Brady, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really watch the game because it was on the same time as my game, but uh, I kept seeing the scores, and I just I felt for you, man. I was like, man, what the heck? In how'd Vegas? You, how'd you keep engaged in that Niner that Niner Patriot game? Yeah, it was it was I'm phenomenal. Just take a from nap. The it was a, it was. Terrible game. Well, for one, it was National Tight End Day, and um, you no, know, I think National Tight End. It's like every week is like National Tight End Day. No, I, I'm just pretty, this week. Pretty was. sure it was the previous week as well. No, just one. George week Kittle just here. makes up holidays now. Well, it's that's how special he is. He's the best in the league. He, um, nothing wrong with silver or bronze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we got some exciting stuff. We broke two breaks of Prism WNBA. And uh, a lot of buzz. We had a lot of new collectors in the chat that were chasing the WNBA stars. And it is the inaugural release of WNBA Prism. And as you know, if you're collecting cards, Prism is the pinnacle of collecting. The number one rookie card is Prism. So you're starting to see uh, Sabrina Ionascu, who's got her first card from Oregon, also mentored by Kobe. She's in here, so she's probably the bigger name out of the gate for rookies. But you're getting the first Sue Birds. You're getting the first Diane Taurasi Prisms. So it's uh, it's got quite the buzz. And uh, uh, I wanted to talk to C Red. You know, you're you're the Prism King around here when it comes to basketball cards. Mm-hmm. Um, talk a little bit about Prism WNBA and, and what do you think that it, it, its future may hold? I think in terms of uh, I think we all understand in terms of like the the um, especially where the hobby has been going. We know that the first Prism anything is is more valuable, um, and we've seen that even with basketball with the twelve thirteen Prism mm-hmm. um, product line. So if 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 uh, you know, obviously, I support it, and uh, I love to see it. You know, more more women NBA products is a great thing. So, being the first prism, I think um, maybe people not, may not appreciate it right now that you know it's just been released, and nobody really knows what to make of it, especially if you don't watch the WNBA as much. But um, down the line, I see it being like um, one that people are going to be like. You know, I, I wish I got her first prism or, you know, whoever it is, the, the rookie or vets. Yeah, I mean, because essentially you could look at it a couple different ways. You know, like obviously Sue Bird's been in the league for almost 20 years, but it's her first prism. So is that going to be viewed as a Sue Bird prism uh, rookie card? Um, um, so it, it, it'll be interesting to see. And it seems like, you know, with prism WNBA compared to the NBA products, there's not like, well, at least that we know of, there's yeah. no, no, cho- no choice. Or, or a fast break or whatever they call it. There's not a lot of different parallels. So in the morning, I know I hit a gold auto and a black gold parallel in just a half case. So um, it seems like the colors are going to be a little bit more. I mean, obviously, six boxes is a small sample size. I, um, but I think that makes sense, right? Because um, from what we understand over the summer, uh, production on it was cut. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was telling people this past week, I was like, you know, um, the thing you guys got to understand is that I think – WNBA Prism might be actually pretty loaded, like you just said, with, in terms of colors and low-numbered parallels because of the fact that Panini, for some reason, they told uh, distributors straight up like that, w- like they weren't able to make as much as they wanted to. So Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, this could be a good product to speculate on as well. I mean, if you did get a case at a pretty good price, not a bad idea to store it, hold it for a couple years. Um, I think this hopefully will be a release that Panini does every year. I hope they don't do multiple different variations of it. Right. Let's just keep it hobby and retail SKUs. If. Um, I, but I would like to see that. I don't want to see the uh, the choice and the fast break and all that stuff. Uh, let's keep it simple with this release. Um, also, let's like not flood the WNBA category with releasing like encased and certified <laughs> and and like 
illusions. Like, let's keep it kind of similar to what they're doing with racing and let's keep it like five to six skews throughout the year and make it a good five to six skews. Yeah, and we want to know from you guys watching the video either on Mojo Break Media or live in our chat, we want to know who are you collecting from this set and who is intriguing to you to collect. Um, obviously, Ionoscu got hurt in an exhibition game, and her season ended earlier than we expected. So there probably would have been a lot more buzz going into this because once they announced this product, Sabrina had just got drafted, and it was you know huge news. The next Zion or next LeBron is going to be Sabrina. So And it was um, supposed to come out way earlier this year, right? Yep, yep. And I think they announced it, was it right around the – prior to the pandemic so right at the beginning um, yep. of the zion hype so mm -hmm. you know basketball was was really uh, the focus of the hobby and then with the wmba sprinkled in it definitely created the buzz uh for this I product i say it was like june i think we were we were already here at this location okay so it was it was june um and i think it did get pushed back about a month uh i don't know i mean i you know what i wish i wish there was a wmba team in the bay area yep uh, I think the there's the LA Sparks, there's the Las Vegas Aces, uh, Seattle has a team. That's pretty much it for West Coast. Yep. So I'd love to see a uh, San Francisco, Oakland, San Oakland. Jose. Oakland needs that team. Oakland, yeah. And I don't know, I don't see chat on my phone, so I don't know if there's the features uh, not checked off again um, for that, but maybe we can look into that. Uh, so if you have any comments and you're getting prevented, uh, if not, comment on the video. It's going to be posted on Mojo Break Media. Uh, but I wanted to... Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, do you think that that I mean any of these rookies for the WNBA could reach close to Zion prices? Do you think Ionoscu obviously probably have to wait for her to play, but could it be like man, her silvers are going for a thousand or her silvers are going for five hundred? Do you do you think that it could reach? It I, could have I, that reach? I think it. I think we're gonna have to wait and see. Maybe five years down the road, we'll 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 know for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but out of the gate, it would be pure speculation and guess right now yeah uh but it i mean it could we saw with um was it 12 13 prism first year of prism i mean look at look at common cards yeah from that from that release and so, nascar right nascar and, prism and nascar and uh NASCAR. 20 2018 was the first year so i think the, some of those boxes are crazy because it's the first one and then world cup prism from 2014 forget about it i mean it's insane uh so uh, i wanted to get into this story that tmz broke Rob Kardashian is involved in the sports card hobby. Um, you know, this, this list of celebrities is pile, starting to pile up in our hobby, uh, which is a good thing. Um, it's bringing more attention to our hobby. Um, there's a couple things I want to talk about here. I think TMZ missed the mark on, on how much the card is actually worth. Um, I, obviously, TMZ is a wow factor website, and they didn't say it. They said could be worth 250k. So this was done at the bullpen. Shout out to Mitch and Ty. Uh, they were doing an Instagram at 3 a.m. Uh, and Rob uh, bought a case of Mosaic Choice and I think a couple other things. And um, he hit the Nebula one of one Tom Brady. Beautiful. Um, which uh, TMZ claims uh, is worth a fortune. Uh, watch the guy opening the packs uh, for Rob at the card shop. Immediately knows he got a banger and loses his mind. We spoke with some experts who told us card could be worth anywhere from fifty thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand, depending Ooh, on its off. condition. That's like saying, "Hey, that card's worth anywhere from a dollar to two million." Uh, it's somewhere in between there. I. Uh, that's my line, I, though. I, I, that's I, my I, line. Or, or you could always <laughs> go. With the I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the I don't know is a safe <laughs> I bet. I don't know is a safer bet than, uh, you know, a anywhere between like 50 grand and a million. <laughs> um, he also hit a uh, Justin Herbert black gold parallel number to eight, which could be worth around 6,000. That one is worth more than the Brady, I would say. I would think so, too. The two autographs could also fetch 5K a piece, which I believe they're just base autos. So. You know, TMZ. I think there might be a zero I, that's I added I to that. I don't blame TMZ too much. You know, like they don't, they don't, they don't know yet. You know, they they're they new to the game. But that two auto five hundred bucks. Nah, the two. Yeah, it's about five to five hundred, five to a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah it ain't five k. Not five k. No, not 5K. Remember, we, have, no, we no. added a zero. We added a zero on every card, mm -hmm. or yeah. or a multiple multiple mm -hmm. zeros. <laughs> and the two Burrow Fusion Red Rookie cards could also be worth a few thousand each. So, um, it, you know, in the next slide here, we have some of the Nebulas that have sold. There was a Lamar Jackson that sold for 15K. 
The rest of them are all best offers. Deshaun Watson, 2,500. Jordan Love, 7,000 best offer. Larry Fitzgerald, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then there was this that actually sold. So it was a hobby black prism of Tom Brady that sold for $5,500. Mm. Now it's a, it's a Buccaneer one. Nebulas do garner a little bit more attention than the black. Yep. But and this is more realistic. We ain't getting 250 k for a one-of-one one Nebula card unless you really, really love Rob Kardashian and Tom Brady together, and it makes it priceless for you, I guess. Um, I just want to say I know TMZ is all about getting the clicks, but you know, us bait. as hobbyists, we know that that <laughs> my, card's not My concern, that though, is that it's a slippery slope when you start throwing out those ridiculous prices mm -hmm. uh, for multiple reasons. I mean – some people may look at that and go, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to start opening up Mosaic Football. Yeah. Um, if I can open it up, open up a, a case of cards and get, you know, a quarter million dollars, even though it's not a quarter million dollars, it's actually 5000 It, it, it's, it starts getting, it, it's almost like you're a snake oil salesman. You're just yeah. lying about what the, what the price is. Yeah, and, I get, and TMZ isn't going out there maliciously, like, they're not Beckett. They're not. They're not a price guy. They're not. They're not eBay. They don't. They don't know what these are. They're looking for clicks. Yeah. You got to remember that everything's going to be blown out of proportion. They want clicks. But you're right, though. I mean, somebody that's new into this looks and they said that they in the in the story they said they think he spent around 10k, and then you add this all up, you're like 250, uh, 10. You're like he made. Three hundred thousand. You just made two hundred ninety thousand well, I mean, dollars in then, one night of opening cards with somebody on Instagram. But, and then say, say you're lucky enough to pull the gold, right? You're all well. The one on one is worth two hundred and fifty, so the gold has to be worth at least fifty grand, right? Right. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not. Not. And so, it's Tom Brady's what eighteenth year card. I mean, it's it's let's, it, let's, and it's an insert, which usually first, doesn't first mosaic. Let's though. pump the let's pump the brakes with throwing out crazy. I, we don't talk about value on our live feed. Let's pump the brakes with the with the value and the crazy numbers. I mean, <laughs> let's let's chill out. Let's and like I out. said, it, it's there's no problem with saying I don't know. I don't know. Just say I don't know. How it's much whatever, is it worth? It's whatever it's worth, somebody it's wants worth to whatever pay. Whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. I don't know. And that's the thing, you you know, a lot of people are also misunderstanding that say you pull what appears to be a ten thousand dollar card from a break, you still have to find a guy that is gonna give you ten K. You can't take that card, go to a bank and they give you ten K. It's not that easy. And then yeah. you gotta ship it and hope it gets there on time. You gotta hopefully hope that FedEx is or whoever you use doesn't you know, there's a lot of factors that go into you receiving ten K. And then if you're selling it on PayPal, you might as well take two K right off the top and fees and all that other stuff, right? So it's not like it's almost like on storage wars where Daryl would be like forty dollar bill, fifty dollar bill. It's like, yeah, those are gonna go into your store and they're gonna sit there for five years before you sell them. Can't can't go to a Tessie dealership and hand them a Tom Brady card, and you walk out with a Tessie no, whip. That's not going to happen. You're like, this card's worth 50 grand. I'm taking that car right would, now. Would be awesome, but... But like, you can't do it. You can't do it. So, I mean, and then you look not at... Not yet. You look at some of the Tua's. <laughs> a one of one Tua sold for 20, but the bases are anywhere from around, you know, 1,000 to 1,500. So, obviously, they were way off on all of their numbers. It is clickbait. They reported this this morning. TMZ site's so crazy, I had to go to, like, third page to find it. I mean, it's, like, already, like... Just buried down there, so but that's a crazy spike in the Tua's out of the gate, though. Because I, I I look at that card and I, where's Mosaic rookie autos gonna stand in the rookie autos that you want to collect throughout the year? Is, is it gonna be a top ten? Uh, yeah, exactly. Once, not. once like, Prism comes out, I I mean, it's a great card, but I think it's in my mind, I I value it at like a five hundred dollar rookie auto. What do you think, C-Rad? Once, once Prism, we've got Contenders. Optic. I mean, wh what do you think Mosaic stands in the grand scheme of things? The base or the auto? Um, the auto. The auto. Let's go auto. With the auto. Which they are a little bit more rare because there's only two of them. In yeah, the box, that's that's right? the, that's the point I was gonna make. Um, because you know if you open up so much mosaic, but um, they are they, they are they are stickers as well. They are stickers. They but they are pretty tough to pull. Um, you gotta factor in the first mosaic thing. Um, yeah, I'll say a top ten rookie card maybe. Top fifteen, top ten, maybe top ten, top fifteen, maybe. Yeah, top just because of just because of how difficult they are to hit. Yeah, yeah. And and it's a it's a prism product. I'm thinking of that. Like again, and it's and if if it didn't have if it wasn't a prism product or the first mosaic, 
I'd be like, no, it doesn't even, it, it wouldn't even matter, right? Like some of these products that come out, like that are just like filler products yep. for football that you get a two or you can get a two or bro and it's nice, but it's not going to be one of the main autos that you want every single year, exactly. right? As a, as a PC collector. Top 15 doesn't get you on the podium, bro. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> so um, I understand their, va- I understand why um, they're maintaining their value or even the value going up on them. I just um, I don't know long term where it's going to where it's going to stand. Well, right now is the time that I was telling everybody last week. It's time to sell your Tua. This is like if I had a bunch of Tua's that I was sitting on, I would be selling them. have the auctions ending right now Mm. going into Sunday. I I think I think his value is higher right now than it's going to be come next week and maybe the following yeah week. because i know he's number one but i think by the end of the game he's going to have a 99 imprinted on his jersey so um you I, know I'm just, a bunch of grass stains too i'm just so. saying it it not only i mean yeah from ram saying obviously i just think that is a tough game <laughs> to come out your first start you're going to have some butterflies and you're going against a defense that looked good monday night uh i mean uh, their their offensive line is I okay. It's like middle of the road. I just I don't know, man. I I would if you don't sell your two is right now. I would hold. I think he's going to be good. I think he's going to put up good numbers. I don't think his first game is going to be one of those games though. Yeah, I agree. Um, we will see. But I'm excited. I'll be watching. You know, as a fellow left hander, I'm excited to see another left hander in the league because there's not another left handed quarterback out there right now. Um, so, I mean, I think it was Tebow was the last one. So, anyways, uh, we've got the main part of the show. We have the interview with Ryan, Card Collector 2. Make sure you guys follow him on his Instagram. He also has some phenomenal Life of a Card Shop videos that are on his YouTube. And uh, we have a great conversation. So, without further ado, here comes the interview with Card Collector 2. What is going down, everyone? We are here with... The famous card collector too from Instagram. He is. Uh, we're lucky to have him on the show. We're going to talk about all kinds of topics, including his card shop and some of the cards that he likes. What's going down, Ryan? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Um, yeah. You know, this hobby is uh, is blowing up, man. So it's just a fun to be fun to be a part of it right now. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely crazy times, but uh, it's great. I love seeing all the attention on the hobby. It's it's good to get some some new faces in there. And again, certainly appreciate you having me on the show. Absolutely, man. Um, so let's like get into how you got in the hobby. I know it could be a long story, but uh, what was the main thing that got you into this hobby? Yeah, so I started with Pokemon right back in like '99. So. Um, I remember being like in third grade and everybody collected Pokemon cards. They were getting stolen from school. So they banned wow. them. So it just kind of transitioned me to sports cards. And then like 2002, 2003, uh, somebody that went to my high school was on the Ohio State National Championship team and then went pro um, and co- uh, had cards in like 2003, Sage hit. Um, and I remember being at the mall, opening a pack from a store called Cardboard Heroes. They nice. sold like mostly sports stuff, but you could get like a pack or two. Um, so I bought a couple of packs and I remember pulling his card and that just kind of got me hooked. So I've uh, been in it for for quite some time now. Nice. Now, when you guys, you know, I kind of was in high school during the Pokemon days. I, I actually, mm-hmm. we, we I, if Pogs blew up, man, that would be, you know, <laughs> that would be huge for my, my generation. But when you guys had Pokemon back then, did you guys play Pokemon or was it more of a collecting thing back then? Yeah, I was really, really young. So I didn't understand quite how to play the Pokemon game. Um, so it was mostly just trading them um, or stealing them. That's that's why they got banned. Uh, yeah. I remember playing more Yu-Gi-Oh! Like that gotcha. was the game I tried to play. Um, didn't really understand the whole concept of it. So I never played too much of it, but um, didn't end up playing a lot of Pokemon. I was still pretty young at the time. Awesome. And you got a, a card shop in Grove City. Uh, tell us how that that started. It looked like it was a shop that you maybe had been in before, and then you decided, hey, this is something I want to get into. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I mean, since I was a kid, I mean, I really wanted to own a card store. It was just kind of always my my dream. Um, I didn't expect it to happen so early, but it was you know last May I got a a, a, a call from the owner who I've known for you know fifteen years, and he said, you know, hey, um, I'm selling. You want to buy a card store? And uh, you know didn't really take it too seriously. It was kind of in one ear out the other. And I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I'd love to. Right. And he's like, no, really, I want to sell it. Um, 
got off and, you know, consulted, uh, I had conversation with like RBI crew, you know, Ryan Bannister, who oh, I'm yeah. friends with. Great guys. Yeah. Um, yep. And then Andy at IndyCard Exchange, right? Those are two guys I really look up to in, in you know, the hobby. Um, you know, had conversations with them and it just kind of made sense, right? I mean, he had been in business for so long. It was a turnkey business. So just, you know, he had clients that knew where it was. We closed and remodeled it, but, you know, with my online following and then the presence he had built in the, you know, Columbus area for 40 years, it just kind of made sense, right? I could kind of merge them and, you know, put my own touch on it. And that's just what I did. So, yeah, it it happened out of nowhere. I mean, again, this was a life dream for me, right? Being able to own a card store. It sounds silly, but, you know, I was, I was doing cards full time. But to me, it's, it wasn't as fun just doing it over a computer, right? I like talking to people. Um, um, pretty extroverted. So, um, sitting in front of a phone right all day and trading and selling on Instagram is cool, but right. being able to have face-to-face interaction that, that made it so much more enjoyable for me. So like I said, I didn't expect it to happen at 26, but it just, it did. And I, I enjoy it so much. With things so crazy, does he give you a call and say like, man, I, I sold it a little couple years too early or <laughs> is he just, was he just done with it at that point anyway? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> he, he ended up moving and then ended up moving back to the region and like works out of a flea market now. So, uh, it kind of was a, it's a very interesting topic. Um, cause it was like, Hey, I'm going to move out of state and, you know, retire and, uh, you know, go that route. And it didn't last very long and he kind of came back. So yeah. And now this is kind of an industry question. I don't know if anybody's going to understand it. They may, but yeah. when, when the purchase came about the card shop was yeah. his allocation from distributors included. And you don't have to answer that if you don't yeah, want sure, to, sure, sure. Did, yeah. did that, I mean, cause that would obviously, you know, mean that, a lot, you know? Yeah. That, that was the asset that I purchased for sure. The inventory, yeah. it was more like a museum, right? So like how he worked, how he operated is, a deal would come in, right? Let's say it's a thousand dollar deal. And it was like, he only typically bought stuff he really liked or like higher end stuff, stuff he knew he could move. And yeah. he would come in, get the deal for a thousand, take two cards out for that are worth 50 bucks and sell you the deal for a thousand and ten dollars. So he wanted to work on small margins, flipping a lot of it, but none of it ever went out in the showcases. So the showcase stuff was like stagnant. It was 2009, 2010, like there was, there was piles of Chris Johnson rookies or Brett Favre's first base cards as a Viking. Like it, <laughs> right. it never turned. So the asset that I purchased was the allocation, the location, right. the location is good, but the allocation, I mean, for anyone in the industry, you I mean, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. And that's, I think that's key is if you could come across a scenario of that, you guys that are listening out there is, I mean, you may not be able to find it now, but maybe when it slows down a little bit, that might be a, a way to get in because as we know, the guys that buy boxes in this industry, it is yep. absolutely tough to get what you want at, 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 a, at a reasonable yeah. price. So, absolutely. Um, so, you know, with your shop, what, what do you, when you were setting it out, when you were, you know, planning this out, what was your like main thing to set yourself apart from other shops? Yeah. So, the one thing I wanted to, to really do with it was I wanted to be like a one-stop shop. So mm-hmm. th- my thing was, is like, if you came into my store and said, Hey, do you have this? My goal was to never be able, never to tell you no. Right. Even I didn't have exactly what you wanted, some sort of variation of what you wanted. Right. So this before Pokemon was big, you know, I knew Pokemon from when I was younger. I was like, I want to carry Pokemon. So we carry right. Pokemon, right. I wanted to have every supply you could have there's only, it's only like 500 and it's just under, it's like right around 600 square feet. So it's not very big. So right. space is a commodity there. Um, but that, that was the big thing was just being able to offer something like when the old owner had it, it was very, it was very tight. So the way he had the showcases up, everything you, everything you would come in and want supplies, boxes, it was all, he had to touch it right? Like yeah. you couldn't go behind it. It was very uh, transactional based. There was no space for you to walk. There was no chairs, right? I wanted to make this like an environment. Like you yeah. want to go to the card store. You want to hang out there. You want to look at in boxes, look for singles, look at packs, look at, like I wanted to offer everything. So um, that was really big for us was making it more uh, uh, personal and uh, of an experience rather than like, Hey, come get your stuff. And you know, there's the door. Um, Absolutely. You guys got to check it out on YouTube. Um, there's a great 
uh, before and after video that uh, Ryan made of like how it looked before and how it looks now. And I mean, it's night and day, um, you know, no, no disrespect to the old shop owner, but yeah. you know, I think what you did is making it open, making it more friendly mm -hmm. is, is absolutely key. And uh, he's got a great singles area that I seen that has everything labeled. So you can kind of find what you're looking for. Now I have a hypothetical question. I'm sure you get every day. How do you respond to somebody that calls you up or walks in and says, I have cards to sell and they're from 1980. <laughs> uh I joked about this earlier today, but I, 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 I think it might be true where I think I see more 80s stuff than I do more modern stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's all the time with the recent explosion, right? I'm sure anybody in the industry now hears about it, but like, oh, I've got all these cards from when I were a kid and you know, it's that 1980s, early nineties, you know, you're talking the junk wax era right. and it's hard because what, what we were doing at first is like, we can always take a look, right? You know, we buy this card, this card, this card, but most people don't have this card, this card, or this card. Like you're not seeing the 93 Jeter foil or a Jeter tops or, you know, serial numbered basketball from the late nineties. Um, like you're not seeing that stuff. You're seeing mm -hmm. like 91 Donruss or, you know, junk. And the problem is, is like, I'd never wanted somebody to drive out of their way Right. To sell me something with the expectations that, hey, I Googled this, what is it, Jose Uribe card from 91 and it's worth $15,000. Right. Like we get that one a lot. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I don't like it, – it's not fun to tell somebody, hey, these cards aren't worth $5 for this 5,000 count box. Exactly. But – so we always just damper expectations like, hey, we don't buy a lot from the 80s or 90s. If you're ever in the area and you'd like to stop by, I will gladly take a look tell you what you have and what you can do with it, right? Because that's the best thing is if you got to tell somebody no, you might as well give them an option to do something with them. Hey, put Good these point. up on Facebook Marketplace, put these up on Craig, put them up on Craigslist. These are your options. They're not worth a lot. So if you can get some money for them, this is how you would go about that. Or maybe so that, hold on to another 40 years and exactly, maybe, right? maybe somebody will throw the, the other ones away and it, they'll be worth something. We joke about it though, but like if everybody throws them away – Exactly. And they're not as not as readily available. Um, you know, that that's, that's a big a good thing. Point. I, li I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that because I I feel like sometimes when I tell people we're not interested, they they're like thinking I'm trying to take it for less, and it's exactly. like no, no, I just I don't I don't even want it. And it's like, well, why yeah. not? They're like 40 years old. It's like, then you try to explain to them and and what we know every day, but they just like, well, what do you mean? So they can say go. And it's like, yeah, yeah, but it's you know they made a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. because that, that's before the internet existed, right? So you didn't know that somebody in California and Maine and Arizona and Florida had the same card as you, right? You know, right? It's just, yeah, different times. Exactly. So, um, so what's what's hot these days? I know Pokemon probably is a big hit for you. I see you guys do a lot of videos on that. What sports card related stuff is are people coming into the shop to buy these days? So when basketball was basketball was going, basketball was was the big hitter for sure. I mean, anything Zion, right? When when basketball was being played, it was every single day. Hey, do you have Zion? Um, so. That has cooled down since. I'm, it seemed like the market kind of went up a lot around end of July, early August, and then has cooled down since. Um, so recently for us, it's been football, right? I, last year, before the market was where it's at now, we sold a lot of football. You know, I'm 15 minutes from Ohio Stadium, so Ohio State's big. Um, an hour and a half from Cincinnati, I'm two hours from Cleveland. Like we're we're near major. Uh, football teams, so football's really big in, in Columbus. Um, so we sell a lot of that. Other than that, I mean, we saw baseball and basketball here or there. We saw some hockey, saw some Pokemon. Um, the one thing I will say, especially with the recent explosion in the market, is we saw a lot more singles than we ever did. That's, you know, we're, we're staying on top of getting them out for sale and and constantly updating that stuff. But a lot more singles um, than we had ever sold before, um, as so many, uh, you know, fresh faces have gotten into the market. Now, in terms of football, you know, Mosaic obviously was a big hit, um, mm -hmm. which was its introduction into football this year. What do you tell collectors that are like, should I, you know, invest in Mosaic with Prism and Optic coming out? How do you get that conversation? And if so, how do you handle it? Um, not really. I haven't been asked specifically about that. Um, uh, the one thing I try to, you know, educate uh, consumers on, especially newer ones, is like, mm -hmm. If your goal is to collect it, typically 
the first week, two weeks, three weeks that the product's out, it's going to be higher than it's going to be three months from now, right? right? Excluding the situation where, you know, Tua is not starting versus Tua is starting now or Chase Claypool has no good games, then he has monster games, right? Like mm -hmm. you can't, you can't uh, count, count that into the situation, but for the most part, things will cool down after a release. So if your goal is to invest in that as a long-term, uh, you know, investment, then your, your best bet is probably to wait. Um, I, that that's the one thing I, I always try to preach yeah. on that is patience, Point. right? Like if, if I understand you might want a rookie autograph of this player, but if he's not going to do anything in the next three weeks, it might make sense because the product is really hot right now. Yeah, yeah, just to wait it out. Yeah, I mean, and, and you can kind of say that with basketball too, is that like, you know, we get collectors, you know, when we were breaking, we were just breaking, you know, regular prism, you know, it was just regular yep. prism every year. And then all of a sudden now you got like, you know, fast break, you have, you, know, you have the team all versions, you have choice, the choice versions. Yeah. So it's like, you know, collectors are like, which parallel should I gravitate to? And, and it's really hard to say, you know, which ones are going to be the ones down the line that are going to be worth the most. And then you look at the pop reports on the silvers, from Giannis to now, you know, you've yeah. got 9,000 on some of the guys like Luca. So it's like, do you stick with number cards or people, you know, so it's really hard to kind of predict where collectors are going to go maybe five or 10 years from now. Right. So. Yep. Um, and, and, it, and honestly, even what, two years ago, I mean, nobody was buying court sides. No. Like, I mean, a Luca PSA 10 court side silver. I mean, I, I had a friend buy a court side non silver of Luca last year for under $300. And I know the silver 10 now sells for like 21 K. I mean, right. so market trends change a lot like that. And it's, it's so hard to predict, right? Like not Nostradamus. It's just, you know, collect what you like and you'll never be disappointed. Hey, yeah. And what do you think about like the second year Lucas, you know, you've seen, you're seeing those sell for almost more than when Luca was a rookie and his first cards came yeah. out. The second year Lucas are, they've gone crazy. I mean, is the third year Luca going to be <laughs> prism still, you know, it's like, where do we stop? Yeah. You know, and, and it's a, it's a good conversation to have in this hobby. Right. Yeah. Um, but what, what are your thoughts on, on stuff like that? You know, do you buy second year guy, like second year rookie card? I mean, sophomore cards, or do you kind of stay away from those? Uh, just in terms of like the base cards and in terms of as a, as a long-term investment, no. Um, if I wanted a Luca at this point, I would just, I would get the, the Luca card. I think the, the argument with the second year stuff is very similar to trends we see in the market with other things, right? The, the, the key asset or the key commodity gets so expensive. You, the average collector can't afford it. So we go to the mm -hmm. second best thing, right? So you can't right. afford the Luca prism. So let's get a Luca second year, right? You, you can't afford a LeBron tops Chrome PSA nine. Let's get a LeBron tops PSA nine, right? So rather than getting a LeBron tops Chrome PSA six, you're like, I'll just get a tops PSA nine. Then it, it you know, that causes the market to rise there. So I'm not surprised by it per se, but in terms of like in my long term, you know, portfolio, the Luca, the, the prism base doesn't do it for me. Again, you mentioned, numbered cards i think that is an intriguing play there i like the serial numbered stuff more mm -hmm. maybe a a luca blue ice prism second year you know team color type stuff um i think that has some potential but the just the base doesn't really do it for me yeah i mean i'm even intrigued at like the color blast right i seen i think i seen a color blast lebron going for over 12k <sighs> Yeah, and, and you know it, it worries me, and, and I believe you know I, I'm I'm wholeheartedly believe Panini is not holding anything back, but you just without a print run, yeah. you know it's like you just like is that an investment? You know what if there's 200 of them and they just haven't been discovered? You know, and it's like it's a crazy thing. It's 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 like the Willy Wonka magic ticket in a sense that you just don't have any idea about, right? Yep. Same thing with like tiger stripes. Yeah. Like you just you don't know. So that, like that's what makes the serial numbered cards so much fun. Is like. You there you do know there is a certainty to that that card, whereas like Tiger Stripe right we we've always been told it's probably out of ten, but if you can't confirm it it's just makes it a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, and, and the crazy thing is, is I saw your LeBron collection, which is you know phenomenal. I've got a few chromes myself, but I, I regret selling my refractor. But those are numbered to five hundred, right? So you know that those they're, they're, they're numbered, you know, there's only 499 yeah. other ones besides the one you own. And, and I look at the data from that time period when we had Kobe, which Kobe was just, you know, base and refractor. Right. And then you had LeBron had the X fractor, the black, the gold, and you know, the base, I might be forgetting some, but now you've got like 80 or 90 colors. So it's like, it's weird to, to say, well, LeBron sells for this, but you know, he didn't have those other colors. Right. Yeah. So. And that, that's the thing that 
especially you know, I've seen a lot of newer collectors do is like compare LeBron to Luca or even Luca to Giannis, right? Like mm -hmm. w those aren't really fair comparisons. Like the, like you said, the population, the amount of cars they had, right? It just, those are very, two very different arguments. There is like the population on the LeBron tops Chrome refractor nines and tens is a fraction of what Luca silver tens is, you know, the silver 10 number for Luca is right. Right. Um, out of all the LeBrons that are out there, which which one is the one that you're going to try to get next? Man, I know there's so many of them. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm not sure. I would love um, I'd probably want like a Bowman Chrome Refractor. I have the Topps Chrome Refractor and I have the SP Authentic. I, mm -hmm. I'd love the Ultimate Collection Rookie Auto, but those are those, those are up there at the moment. I'm not sure I want that. Actually, I take this back. I want a LeBron Jordan dual auto. That's, I think, one of the yeah. next cards on my list. Is yeah, probably a half mil or something these days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it doesn't have, it does have to be a rookie auto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Just anything of those two. I mean, from you know, oh five, oh six, oh six, oh seven, anything like that. I would, I would be okay with. I just, I don't want it to be college, but I would at least like to get one auto of those two. Absolutely, and I, I think I saw on your Instagram you had an oh three, oh four box of. Something right? There was a there was a box yeah. of LeBron on it. Yeah, they're like top prospects. I mean, it's a it's one of the cheaper products from that year. LeBron has a rookie auto in it, but yeah, those nice. walked into the store the other day. But yeah, relatively relatively well, cheap. I mean, so, anytime you get any 0304, I mean, sure, no matter sure. what it is, right? Yeah, so, I'm not I'm not complaining. So are you gonna break that, or are you gonna be? Is it gonna be in the shop, or no? That's just something I just plan to throw in the safe and just you know keep back for a while. Nice. Nice. I like it. We do the same. <laughs> There's yeah, stuff, that, you know, we wind up breaking too much stuff. We're like, man, we should have kept some of that stuff. Yeah. And that's, and again, <laughs> you guys, you guys can attest to it. And that's, that's definitely one of the harder parts about owning a store is, you know, you get, you see so many cool things, right. And it's like the cards do pay my bills, right. So you have to be able to sell them, but it just some things you just want to keep. So, you know, that's, that's yeah, just, I I've told this story on our podcast before it was 1415 national treasures was just about to come out and, yeah. and, and prism at the time was nobody wanted it. I mean, we had to give it away. We were doing it for hitless packs. So in order to get with one of the distributors in order to get more cases, I think we were only allocated a couple more 1450 national treasures. We had to buy two cases of prism 1314 to get one <laughs> national treasures case. Uh -huh. And the prism cases were at 20 bucks a box. Oh and and we literally, I mean, I had 50 cases of Prism, like, and mm. I could not, I, I was giving it away for hitless packs for like baseball breaks and people were complaining or like, why'd you give me this crap basketball, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I look back on it. I mean, I don't even want to know how much money that is uh, now, you yeah. know? So, um, but yeah, it changed. I think it was that summer with Cat, I believe is when it went from like a $10 silver to like a two, $300 silver. And then the rest is history on those. Yeah. Ones. I was going to say, I remember picking up town silvers at a show really cheap right before that popped off. That's that's definitely yeah. right when right around that time period that, that all that stuff all just went to a different level. Yeah, there's there's rumors that there was like a buying group that set it up because there was like a need for, you know, Kobe, you know, tops chrome, LeBron tops chrome. There wasn't the, the next, you know, chrome. Gotcha. And there was rumors that they, these guys bought like four or five hundred of each guy. And then they, you know, went up and they they made this this market value, which now I, I don't know if I believe that conspiracy theory because yeah. then nobody would be buying these cards. But sure. when that first happened, people were like blown away on the you know forums and on Twitter were like, this is manipulation because these cards were ten dollars and now they're two hundred dollars. What's going on? So yeah, very different times. Def definitely different times. Um so it looks like you offer some grading services. Let's let's settle the debate. Are you doing BGS? Are you doing PSA? And if so, why? Yeah, at the moment, just PSA. Um, the The biggest reason is the, the market, right? The market, yeah, exactly. everybody wants PSA stuff, right? It just not saying, you know, personally, I, I love BGS Labs. I think they look great. I love, uh, you know, BGS 10 Pristine, like the gold bars. Those look amazing. Um, but the market says right now we want PSA, right? PSA 10s bring a premium, mm -hmm. a, a big premium. And I think the big thing for, for me is if, if there's not a, a distinguishable time difference between either company at this point, it makes sense to send right. cards to where they're going to be worth more in the end. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I would love to be able to use both just at the moment. If the time difference is, is the same, I makes more sense to, you know, get more money out of the, the card that's worth more. So yeah. in, 
Uh, yeah, I just yeah, I'm on the same page with you. I mean, when we started, it was like PSA vintage BGS modern, right? That was the the yep. narrative that everybody yep. said for sure. And then it became like, well, wait a second. Now PSA tens are double the price of the BGS nine fives. I mean, obviously, if you get a black label, but that's such a hard percentage to get. Yeah, so it's like, sure. yeah, I, I my partner is BGS and I'm PSA, and I'm like PSA. That's where I'm sending my cards from from yeah. the foreseeable future. Now, do you think that the pop report will get so big on PSA it may flip at some point? Or yeah, that's that's a really really good question, right? Is we're you know we're heading towards a twenty thousand pop card, right? It's it's coming. It's likely going to be Zion. You would assume Zion's probably mm -hmm. the first card to break that. Um, I, I'm not sure, right? The, a lot of the Instagram chatter I've seen is are Beckett nine fives underpriced. Right, that yeah. like there's a pretty substantial difference between like a, a Zion 9.5, I think it's what 350, 375, and I think a PSA yeah. 10 550. I mean, that, that's a substantial gap for cards that for the longest time, right? For those that have been in the hobby five years ago, those were very similar numbers. Um, that's a, that's a pretty wide gap, so yeah, I'm not sure. I you, the Luca, the Zion, a lot of these cards now have 10,000 pop, you know, yeah. Uh, 10,000 pop counts, but there's also a lot of people. I, I'm not sure we really realize how many people got in the market with COVID. Does is 10,000? I know that's, yeah, you know that's what, I, mean? what like, I struggle with every day is that we say, is this going to, you know, and it's going to lead me into my next question here. Um, but like, you know, is bubble going to burst, blah, 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 blah. It's like, but we don't know how many people jumped in. I mean, you know, we may have went from like, let's just say, you know, I'm throwing out numbers that are obviously incorrect. I mean, we, we, may, we may have went from like 100,000 collectors to 5 million. You know what I mean? You, we just don't know. Right. So my question is, is um, if we are in the height of modern day collecting, what factors do you think can cause this bubble bubble to burst? Like what would cause it to burst? Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's just, you know, good for a long period of time. Um, yeah. So I will be upfront that I don't think we're near a bubble bursting. I think there's things now that like there's just the one advantage to cards now, especially versus like the 90s, right? Because we always hear over that the, the biggest argument I hear now is overproduction, right? right. There's there's a lot of sets. There's a lot of cards. That's that's for sure. But I think the advantage we have now in the market versus like the 90s when the bubble burst the first time is um, is there's so many routes you can go in cards, right? You can break. You can grade. You can go with yeah. the retail arbitrage where you go to a Walmart and you wait for three hours and you you right. know make five hundred dollars. You could you know go to shut up at shows. You like you can create a podcast. You can create you know sports card investor. You could be a YouTube star. Like there's so you could open a card store. You yeah. can there's so many different routes you can go and there are zero numbered cards. There's there I don't know. I'm just I'm pretty optimistic about the market. I just with so many different ways you can go and so many different things you can get into. I I, I tend to to feel pretty optimistic about the market. Um, yeah. So me too. I mean, you hear the rumbling, so I figured it was you know to bring it up to get your point of view. And I'm on the same page with that. I think if anything, I think you'll fall. You'll some people will fall off, but there's so many people in that it's really not going to make a huge huge difference, right? Yeah. So I think the concern I have about the market is. I was a little more concerned like when it, we had that big run up, right? So like COVID happened in March and then there's a run up, right? And until July, you anything you bought pretty much turned to gold. You didn't yep. lose money, but that's not how a business works. Like everything right. can't go up. And my concern was always like I, I, I told this story. I remember last year when May, uh, Big Ben got hurt hurt his elbow mason rudolph came in i sold a contenders red mason rudolph 9510 auto on check out my cards for like nine hundred dollars wow. the same card sold in january for like 73 dollars my biggest concern especially when covid happened was always people getting in you know just rushing to the market and just throwing money at whatever they think is good right whatever somebody mm -hmm. tells them is good and then six months from now, like Luca is a prime example. Luca got to two thousand dollars for tens. You're like, hey, Luca's a star. He's gonna be great. Let's buy five of them. You spend ten grand. Those cards now are worth fifty five hundred dollars. It's insane. If you're new, yeah. forty five. You know, for us, the guys that have been in the market, that's a seven hundred dollar increase on the floor from a year ago. Those were right. four hundred as tens. They're eleven hundred now. That's a huge increase. That's great. The market is up. That's what we want. But if you're the guy that just spent ten grand and is at fifty five hundred dollars in value, you don't care what the floor was, 
right? Yeah. You're upset you just lost four grand. And I think my concern is somebody getting out because they got crushed right, on, a, on right. an investment like that. Or that, like the bowl bowl scenario, right? Exactly. Where there's one practice scrimmage and it's yep. like, oh, he's the next best thing. Um, I even feel that way with uh, Clyde Edwards Elair. I mean, he had I was another good just game. Gonna say but... that. I was just going to say that. We talked about this on, on the podcast. Uh, I'm a co-host on, and like the first week Clyde Edwards Alaire came out, he had that great game. His Donruss rated rookie sold for $45. And we talked right. about it. Like Saquon Barkley, great, right? Great rookie year. You can buy his rated rookies from Donruss for $4. Mm-hmm. Like that's yep. going to go down. So the fact that people were paying $45 is a concern. Even like we we've mentioned it before on there. It just it seems like a lot of the market now is based on FOMO, right? Like yeah. you don't want to miss out on the next guy. So everybody sells. Yep. Like every single quarterback sells. So it just, yeah, I think that's one thing that, that scares me about the market now is, is the FOMO aspect of it. Like Drew Locke, like we talked about this, Drew Locke, Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen, Sam Darnold, Dwayne Haskins, Gardner Minshew. Like think of all the young guys in the league that sell because of what they could be. What they could be. Yeah. Dwayne Haskins is the third string. Sam Darnold's on a terrible team. Danny Dimes has no weapons. Minshew's about to get benched. Like these guys sold for a lot of money. And here we are seven weeks in, or, you know, six, seven weeks in. And those guys aren't sitting as pretty. And it's just like not every single person in a class is is going to be very good, right? When's the last time you had three Hall of Famers in one class? Oh, four. You know, right, so exactly. Like, Minshew. Haskins, Kyler, Locke, Danny Dimes, not all those guys are going to win Super Bowls. Not all those guys are going to be Hall of Famers, but they sell like they could be really, really good. And I think that's the one thing I uh, I get a little caught up in is the market sells really well for a lot of guys, and that's not how it always has been. Yeah, and I think the perfect scenario was obviously like the, the record Brady sales, and then you had the Mahomes, right? So then it's like because we always talk about football as like an investment, which it wasn't there compared to baseball, sure. and then of course basketball. But then you know the last few years, it's like wait, football's catching up. You know these numbers, yeah. these increases are, are just as much as baseball, basketball. But I think it's the Mahomes effect, right? Um, you you see Mahomes cracked ices for like seventy grand, and you see you know his base going for like nineteen thousand contenders base autos, or probably even more than that now. And I think that's like Minshew could could Minshew be the next guy? If yeah. I buy this, in my mind, I'm buying it for two hundred dollars, but it might be twenty thousand in three years, you know. Yep. And I think that. And then you're right with the with the with the all these people in the hobby. It's like, okay, well, you can't afford Kyler, you can't afford this guy, you can't. Yep. Well, Minshew, I can afford, so I'm yep. gonna spec on him and I'm gonna buy him. So, um, you mentioned your card podcast. Let's let's plug that. Let's get people over there. Yeah. So I. Uh... I'm on a podcast. It's called Card Talk. We release new episodes every Wednesday. Um, Tyler, I have two guys on there, Tyler and Lou. They're they're great. Um, yeah, just it's it's the the one thing we like about our podcast is it's got like different perspectives with it. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of like the hobby vet per se. And then there's Lou who's been in it for about four years, and then Tyler who's you know 12, 18 months into it. So just gives a different nice. viewpoint from people that have been in the hobby for different periods of time to come and talk about you know hot topics in the in in the in the hobby. So shop Instagram and podcast. How do you find time to do anything else? Uh yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's a struggle. Like it's it's yeah. With, I mean, with grading, I mean, I started the year with, you know, one, empl- one part-time employee and we're up to, you know, <clears throat> six full-time employees now. So it's just a lot of different stuff happening. I, I, I love it, but yeah, with the, with the hobby exploding, it just got a lot busier. That's for sure. Well, I mean, one thing like I noticed is like, you know, when I used to work a day job, I think 11 years ago now, <laughs> I would awesome. watch the, I would watch the clock and hope oh, for it to yeah. turn five to go home. Yeah. Now it's like, I see crap. It's five. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get enough done, you know? Yep. And that, I, I was talking with my wife about it earlier today. I'm like, we're like under 60 days till Christmas. Yeah. And I'm like, this is, this is outrageous. Like where did 2020 go? Yeah. So flew. Yep. yeah, flew by. But like you say, I mean, time flies when you're having fun. Yep, exactly. Especially with the passion, I can tell with, with, yeah, you yeah. know, how you speak about it. it, it it's, it's fun mm-hmm. and, and trying to navigate. I mean, I have a wife and two kids. It is definitely hard to allocate, you know, we're using that yeah. word again. Allocate yeah. I'm not there yet. yeah. <laughs> See, I yeah, don't know how you do it. It's tough, it's tough, you know, to yeah. try to find time. Uh, Daddy, can you play? I was like, I gotta, I gotta get this, uh, this yeah. next break posted or yep. whatnot. Right. So yeah. See, I commend um, you. I thought I was busy, but I know, uh, I, I couldn't imagine what, how busy you could be with having kids too. That's a real commitment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a challenge. So you're, you're, 
you're you're definitely beating me in this. I don't I don't have anything like that yet. Well, my wife's the superstar, and and what worked out is she got uh, furloughed from her job, and so she's able to be home for the distance learning and, yep. and, and dealing with my two year old as well. So um, she's the one that uh, wants me home more to give her a break. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, well, let's do some quick hits before we sign off. We we're, okay. once again, thanks for giving us your time today. Um, um, so these are going to be some quick hit questions. Um, what's your favorite product at the moment to open? It could be uh, anything. Personally, cont- yes. I like uh, contenders draft picks. I'm a college guy. Again, Ohio State's my my thing. So contenders draft picks, college. I love cracked dice. So for, if I'm repping it for myself, contenders draft picks. And that's actually, I wanted to ask you that. What do you think, you know, just to kind of go on a segue or, a, you know, a, a tangent here. What do you think about the 2021 draft class? Are you concerned? Or you think it's going to be, there's going to be enough guys that are going to break out? For basketball? Yeah. Yeah, I had a lengthy conversation in shop about this over this over the weekend. I I actually really am optimistic about 2020, 2021 because, you know, typically we have March Madness. Everybody watches it. It's one of the big, it's probably the biggest sporting event. Like you just, everybody watches March Madness. The first weekend of March Madness is the best weekend in sports all year. You've got games 24 seven for, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, not 24 seven, but you get the idea. And that's where you see who's really good, right? Like that's where we learn about guys, right? John Moran had some great games last year. Like you get to see those guys and we didn't get that this year. So I think the big thing is, is, if you didn't watch college basketball all year, you probably didn't see a lot of these guys play, right? You've right. got the the uh, Devi, who's the international prospect. Yep. We didn't see much of Lamelo Ball, like because he was international. Um, but if like if you're out in California and you didn't watch a lot of college basketball, do you know who Obi Toppin is? Did you watch yeah. him play at you know at Dayton? Right. Yeah. So I yeah. think that I, I didn't argument. know about him until last week when I started preparing for Canada's draft. So exactly. <laughs> right. So like if you're not a big basketball guy, if you're not watching every college basketball game, I don't think a lot of these guys are known, right? We didn't get James Wiseman a lot. There's just so much unknown. Mm-hmm. So to me, it just seems like the, it's a good opportunity because eventually one of those guys is going to produce, right? Like LaMelo ball gets drafted by the Knicks and drops 30. His stuff is going to explode. If Anthony right. Edwards goes to the Warriors and the Warriors go, you know, 22 and 0 to start the year when they're all healthy, his stuff's going to go up. So I think there's a lot of unknowns here, but I feel pretty optimistic about the class. It's, but let's be super honest. It's not going to be 1920. Right. We're not, there's no Zion. So we're not going to get that. But do I think there could be superstars in there? Absolutely. I think there will be somebody in the class. Um, yeah, and I just I think with unknown, it's a good buying opportunity because not as many people got to see these guys and you know play in March Madness. So Obi Toppin being a local guy, I think he's one guy I, I'll probably pick up a couple mm-hmm. cards of. Um, and I just don't like you said. I'm not sure guys in California saw him play a lot at Dayton. No. Yeah, I got to see him. So you know if he's going to be a top five pick or is his stuff going to sell? We'll see. But I think time will tell on this class. But so much, so much unknown. I, I, I feel- yeah, and you know it might be a scenario where the hype you know, really precedes them and gets people to buy because we're not even going to have summer league. Right. So, yep. you know, you're going to see maybe some exhibition games. So, I mean, before yep. you, I mean, remember Lonzo ball, MVP summer league, all obviously even raised his value even more that year. Um, so now there's no summer league. So, you know, there might be some opportunities to buy some of these guys right now. If you're not buying Wiseman Edwards yep. or Lamello, you could probably buy some guys on the super cheap out of contenders draft, maybe cracked ice. And then it's just, you know, wait and see whatever position they get put put in, you know, it might be kind of a fun opportunity. Yeah. I didn't even think about summer league. That's, that's very true. That's interesting. I, I forgot all about that. Yeah. There's going to be no Vegas. So from what I understand, unless things yeah. change, they're trying to get the season going by December. Yeah. I'm assuming they're going to have maybe a couple exhibition games and then right into the season. So, no, you know, so true. then it's going to be a question of these guys even going to get any minutes because they're not, yeah. you know, even it, groomed to be there. So yeah, that it may be, be a scenario where these guys, their hype sells their cards for like half the year without even them playing. Right. Exactly. So. But then in the same breath though, do we actually get to see any of them play this year? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah. I'd never thought about that. Yeah. So that's something to, uh, to, to keep up with. And now another question is what's your favorite, and this could be any sport favorite insert of the year. Favorite insert. Um, probably kaboom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like kaboom. I'm a big fan of that. Um, that's the first one that comes to mind. So I'll stick with that. I'll say kaboom. And your favorite signature from an aesthetic standpoint of, of an athlete from this year. Oh, from this year? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess it could be last couple years, but just one that comes to your mind is your favorite signature. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, a lot of it, wor- it could be worse signature too, if you want. To yeah, worse one. signature. Uh, <laughs> Cam Reddish. Yeah, yeah, that one's the line. Uh, that one's hard to ignore. Yeah, the line. <laughs> yeah. The Court Kings one was just absolutely Yeah, I mean, horrible. literally just a, a line. But we talk about it in, you know, in shop a lot. Like, do these guys really learn cursive? I only learned cursive when I was in third grade, and I don't assume they teach most guys. You don't really need it a lot anymore. Right. Well, Admiral Schofield apparently learned cursive the day of his signing his cards. That's apparently. impressive. So, and he's not actually got a decent looking signature. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a little busy, but it's at least it's written out and it's not a couple letters, right? So. Who, who is Who's yours? um like favorite yeah um man um, See, like all time i'm gonna say like jeter jeter's is really nice i really um, like jeter's probably sandy koufax all time yeah that's a great that's a great one great auto um griffey's is cool griffey's is cool i'm a big barry bonds guy but you don't really see much barry yeah, in anything so um probably this year i mean i didn't really care i mean zion's wasn't bad it was like in the middle of the yeah. road right I'm trying to think of basketball. Who would be the, who would have been the the best? Um, I probably have to give it to Schofield because it was the, the most yeah. most on a card. So. Yeah, good effort. Yeah, but um, I like Tyler so, Heroes actually. That's a good one, Tyler Hero. Which one? Yeah, Tyler actually, Hero. that is good. That is good. Yeah, I'll go Tyler Hero. And Tops had some cards. I don't know if you remember seeing on Tops. Yeah, Instagram. the Chrome. They, yeah, and they didn't. They kind of didn't answer it, so they don't know. I don't know where they're going, but they have yeah. some Tyler Hero somewhere. They haven't made any announcement on it either. I don't think. No. No, we were at the summit uh, their, or their conference in, in Arizona last year, and they said that they don't have any plans for it or anything. So I, I, who knows? I remember they got a lot of steam in the hobby when that came out. Yeah, everybody's Even like, unlicensed. oh, it's going to be Topps basketball. Yeah, exactly. Even unlicensed, it would still be good. Um, speaking of the licensing, do you think in our hobby lifetime here that we're going to ever see the uh, LeBron or Jordan on Panini cards? Autos. No. Nope. I would love it. Uh, uh, sure, it would be amazing if I'm if I'm betting. No. Yeah. And uh, one my thing to keep in mind, my understanding is is Jordan has stake in Upper Deck, has like some sort of like stake in that. So my understanding is is he has a vested interest in the company's success. I'm not sure how true that is, but I've heard that too. But I've also heard from people that have worked either with. Uh, him at upper deck or don't work there anymore that they like he kind of comes in once a year signs like 200 things at his own leisure and bounces and say thank you where you know like panini would be like here's four thousand autographs to sign you know what i mean and he doesn't want to like have to deal with that right so uh because you know panini's gonna have to get enough for their whole product line or whatever they're doing so he kind of likes to take his time and do whatever he wants to do so and, from what i honestly and honestly it's it's such a shame I mean, it, it really is. is, especially if like, even if Panini had Kobe stickers left, a Kobe LeBron, like Lakers auto, um, yeah. like a Lakers LeBron and a Jordan Cavs dual auto, just the things we're going to not be able to ever get. I just, it is really, really unfortunate. Um, like Zion, Le- like Zion LeBron dual auto. Just yeah. like, it, yeah, it's just sucks yeah it sucks yeah and then even lebron once he retires we won't have any more panini cards yep. and see that's player's license yeah as i was say i've always i've always heard that rumor to be true and I, I again i don't know it to be for sure for sure so i've never you know stated it as certain but yeah that's always been the rumor right is like he's not in the players the nba players association anymore similar to jordan he has an exclusive contract with upper deck he retires no more cards Right. That's so. and from what I understand, that's true. And I've heard, you know, rumors that he doesn't like uh, Rich Paul, who's his agent from Clutch, has had some bad dealings with Panini in a certain instance. So that he just doesn't like Panini. Allegedly, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can't speak for sure on that. But um, so that to the fact that, yeah, once he's not in the player association anymore, you won't see any LeBron. And, I mean, you're seeing that with Kobe. I think Kobe's name's in limbo, too. Right. We're not getting any new Kobe cards, even just base cards. Yeah, I never heard what happened with those. I mean, again, I heard that they were like my understanding was is like the redemption. Some of them weren't. It's not like most of them weren't being fulfilled. Um, Once he passed, I'm not sure. Again, I don't have any. No, I'm saying it's just his image isn't being used uh, in anything new. So I don't know if there's an estate issue, like whoever has his licensing rights now, Hmm, which I'm assuming his wife and his family. Yeah, Yeah. because if you've looked, unless I'm forgetting something, I don't think any product that came out after his passing had any of his base in there not even a base card 
Yeah, the only card I, the last product I remember him being in was Prism. Yeah, I think that was like right around that time, and then after that, nothing else. Hmm. So interesting. Yeah, so we'll see. Maybe they're working out some kind of deal on his licensing to get him back in the Panini products. But I, I know guys that have retired, I think they have to negotiate to get their rights in the product. So obviously guys like Wes Unseld probably are like a bulk deal with other guys. Yeah. But like Kobe's a big name. They're going to probably try to make yeah, money on him. Yeah, it would be really nice to still have Kobe stuff in in product for sure. Absolutely. All right. So that's all the time uh, we have. We appreciate it. We want to uh, so check you out at Card Collector 2 on Instagram. Um, also, that's the same YouTube channel as well, right? Yep. Correct. Cool. And we're we going to get another behind the, the scenes shop episode. I love those. Um, pr- probably, probably not for a minute. We got some things in the works now, <laughs> but um, it just, again, you, you guys know it as well. It just, it's, it's hard, right? You don't want to you know, put all the, every single detail in there with like a conversation with a customer. You just, there's only so much you can show. So while you want to show a lot of it, there's only so much you can show. So it makes it a little bit more challenging, but hopefully in the, hopefully. Yeah. In the- if you got somebody that's saying F Panini points, you go, like, oh, I got to add that one out. Right. So you can't yeah. And it's just like, YouTube. yeah, I just, I would love to be able to show it all, but unfortunately can. Oh, now, do you have somebody that edits that for you? Cause that's just really well done. Or are you doing that yourself? No, I assure you, it's not me. I had a, uh, okay. <laughs> I've had some uh, some great people who have flown in to uh, film for the week. Um, Sweet. So, flew in, filmed kind of behind the scenes, stay in the life, uh, did a card shop tour, that kind of thing. So, awesome. um, yeah, just producing content, but yeah, it's it was it was fun. Nice. Yeah, it's really well done. I mean, I, I've watched it a, a couple of them already, and uh, they always pop up on my feed. So when I'm looking for something, it comes up. I'm like, oh, I'll watch that. So, um, well, Ryan, we appreciate your time, man. Um, awesome Instagram you've built, and uh, good luck with the shop and everything else, man. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Sounds good. Well, we'll, uh, we'll talk with you later. And anytime you want to do another show, let us know. It would be, be a pleasure to have you on. Awesome. I look forward to it. And we are back. I'd like to thank Ryan for doing an awesome interview. Make sure, once again, you follow him on Instagram. He's got some amazing content, at Card Collector 2, as well as his YouTube channel, which is uh, obviously the, the, the day of the life of the card shop is a phenomenal uh, video as well. So um, I think that just about wraps it up for our show today. Do you guys have anything else to add? No. <laughs> you were a deep thought. Like no, no. I mean, I was going to talk about what I was talking about before. Let, let, let's not. Let's, we'll save that for another episode. Yeah, let, let's, let's. We're going to we're gonna talk about how, <laughs> and we'll get closer to Christmas. We're going to talk about how Dan loves Christmas, how much he loves it. Um, that could that actually can be an episode just in itself. Yeah. Okay. I can just talk about all the things I love about it. 45 minutes of my love for Christmas. Christmas. The Christmas special. The Charlie Brown, Dan Brown Christmas special. See, right? Are you excited to break some WNBA tonight? Yes, yes. I'm trying to see what it's all about. Yeah, we actually had more people. We had people in the chat saying we want to do more today. And I was like, we didn't do enough. We didn't do enough WNBA. Uh, and then we got Phoenix coming out on Friday, guys, as well. Uh, we got some PYTs and some randoms. Contenders baseball as well. And contenders baseball. And that oh. one's that one's a sleeper. I was actually looking at it because I think Prism Baseball came out with three autos a box, and it was like two hundred dollars a box. But Contenders is six autos, and it's $120 a box. Great value. So you get into a break. We're doing six-box uh, breaks, and it's 36 autos. So really, really, really good value for Contenders Baseball. And you know it's going to have Luis Robert. It's going to have Bichette. And it's going to also have, like, Legends and Prospects It may well. have a Rosarena as well. Because yeah. he, he's been pretty much in everything. Yeah. Are they going to have that rookie that just won a, a World Series? Uh, Gavin Lux. Yeah, Gavin Lux should be in there. Uh, Dustin May. Um, I don't Ooh. know. Gavin Lux. <laughs> Why are we talking about Gavin, Gavin Lux? Is the rookie that just won the World Series. I was yeah. trying to think of. Uh, is uh, he? Gonsolin? <laughs> who, who are you saying? See, right? <laughs> what, who are you talking about? Gavin Lux. That's what I was talking oh, okay. about. Oh, okay. Are you trying oh, to. And, I, and Gonsolin, right? Yeah, are, Gonsolin. And, and they have one more rookie, don't they? Are you trying to, like, rub it in that the Dodgers <laughs> won the World Series? Like, uh, very subtle? Yeah. Because Doug didn't, like, play into it. I didn't he, he's just like, it. he's all, well, let me tell you everything about the rookies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I know what he's doing. I'm like, I know what he's doing right now. I kept like, it pro. I kept it pro. Pro's I know pro. what he's doing. That, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that Asterix, the, the, that actually, Asterix the la- World Series championship. And the last time. not a token anymore, right? But do you remember? The last time the Dodgers won the World Series. I don't. You don't? Mm. 32 years ago against the A's. Just the, a lot uh, of this. I don't remember that. A lot of Dennis Eckersley. It's <laughs> very sad. It was 88. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, I mean, what I got to say to Dodgers fans, it's about time. 
You know, what What was it? Six straight division championships? Uh, you know, three World Series, and finally you did it. I think Kershaw performs best when there's either zero fans or 25% fans. <laughs> you know, um, if, you, if you put all the fans there, I don't know. In a World Series game, you might not be able to perform. I don't want to put an asterisk on it because I don't like asterisks. I'm a Barry Bonds fan, and I think it's used too much. But shouldn't the Dodgers get a trophy that's one-third the size? Yeah, I mean, they had to play more playoff games than they normally would, so I guess you can give them that. But it should be like, instead of being a big-ass trophy, it should be like that big. <laughs> See, it's, it's funny it, it, It's funny because I mentioned at the beginning of the season, and it was it was geared at, it was old podcast, well, not old, but like four months ago, uh, it was geared towards the NBA and the MLB that I said, we as fans could not put an asterisk on this championship, and then the Dodgers win. Yeah. And I and I and I, as a Giants fan, you you, you it's just you know that is the rival, that is the yeah. the hated team. I I am happy for Kershaw. I'm happy Kershaw got it. I'm happy Dave Roberts was able to uh, get it. He tried and, to lose it and not get fired. I I think that his <clears throat> I think he was on the hot seat. I think he was one of those guys that if he did not perform this year, they may have gotten rid of him. Yeah, any former Giant, so I guess um, you got to be happy for him. But. Yeah, I mean, one of the Rays. I, I I didn't really know who I was going for until game four, and then I was all Rays. Mm. With that, mm. with that last play of the game, one of the craziest things I've ever seen in any World Series game. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, I was like, "Let's go Rays," but you know, it didn't happen. It was a yeah, good. I it, a game it was seven. a good. It game was a girl. It was a good World Series. Got to give the Rays credit for having, you know, what, an $80 million payroll. Dodgers, well over $200 million payroll. I think $80 million was Mookie Betts, right? So it was just one guy in the whole just team. Just one guy. Much. That's how they should have played it. It should have been the whole squad against Mookie Betts. <laughs> Mookie Betts at center field, left field. No. Like Bugs Bunny. Pitching, catching, <laughs> <laughs> doing it all. But you know what? He pretty much did it all last game. So he, he came up in the clutch. I don't mind paying a guy eighty million if you win if you win championships. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's funny before we go. I know we have a break coming up. Actually, we got about seven minutes. But um, you know, the, the what I've heard around the sports world was that all the ratings are down from the prior years. Actually, this World Series was the lowest Nielsen counts that they've ever had um, in any World Series. Uh, but if you look at it compared to any other live event, it still has more viewers than any other live event that go- has been going on. So I don't know. It's like the Nielsen ratings. I don't think you can really, in the era of people being able to watch YouTube videos, people are able to watch play video games a lot easier. Um, I mean, what? There's 500 channels. It, it's kind of hard to compare it to the 1980 when there was like 15 channels and literally like you're either going to watch MASH or you're going to watch the World Series. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, so, that, you know, it's unfair. And especially these people that maybe hate that sport, like what they did with the NBA. Oh, the NBA, look at their lowest ratings ever. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, it, there's so many more options of things to watch. And I don't know if you're watching it on your phone, if you're watching on your tablet, or you're watching on your TV, you get the same Nielsen ratings. Um, so somebody maybe that's smart can explain that to me. But, yeah, I just thought that people were trying to spin it in a negative fashion. Still, there was like I think twelve million people that were watching those World Series games on average. That's a lot. Speaking of mash, um, <laughs> <laughs> a greatest one. I mean, got to be one of the greatest sitcom songs, right? Intro song, one of the most historic, most widely known. That taxi. Doug's like trying to think about like what is the jingle to mash. Yeah, do, don't do you don't you don't know? No, sing it for so, me. No, I'm not going to sing it. You can't sing it. There's no mm-hmm. lyrics. It's like it had music. the I, it had the, uh, the 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 copter. Right? It had the helicopter yeah, in it. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, there was more to I it. Remember though. that. <laughs> and then you had a uh, taxi. Taxi was just the beast. That was with of Tony a, Danza. Right? Beast of a theme song. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd, Tony Danza. I mean, I'm Danny three. Vito. I don't have a photographic memory at that time when I was three. I'm not um, three now. I mean, I'm three. But that, back then. that's actually. I, <laughs> Theme songs for sitcoms. That's that's an episode that we should get into. What what's your favorite theme song from a, a sitcom, C Red? <clears throat> it's a it's the cliche one. It's either Family Matters or, or Full yeah. House or e- even something as corny as like Saved by the Bell. That oh, theme song Be- was Beverly really Hills Nine Hundred Two One Zero. Beverly Hills Nine Hundred Two One Zero was a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, Friends, no, no, no. right? That stayed in your head for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> So Friends yeah, was we, like late. Was that the mid late nineties? Right. Yeah, but yeah. that so, band pretty much probably was just. Retired off the royalties. Millionaires. Off that song. Uh, yeah. 
Big Bang Theory. There, Which that's uh, bare naked bare ladies. naked ladies. Yep. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot. Full House. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Yeah, in another lifetime, um, because I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I'm a, a, a huge music person too. So in another lifetime, I would have been like a, a jingle writer. A jingle writer. Yeah, we That'd should. Be a we fun could, job. But we could still do that. Yeah, we could. like we Mojo Break needs jingles, and we should be writing jingles. We should. Instead we of, could have segment jingles. We no every every break should have a jingle. We should be. Uh, we should get in the jingle business. You yeah. know what one of my favorite one was was America's Funniest Home Videos with a red, white, and blue. Funny things you do. That was a yeah. good one. Now they just play like an instrumental version yeah, of it. Yeah, I love that one, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, then you got Bob Saget. Is that still on? Yeah, they it's have. On. They had uh, Carlton hosting. I mean, I think, that, for a while, that right? truly is like the beginning. And that's that's well before Ouch My Balls from Idiocracy fame. Yeah. Yeah, but that is essentially what it is. It's just people <laughs> getting hit in the nuts. Yeah, and that would like bring a <laughs> smile to you no matter what. The only problem I always it's had timeless. with America Funniest Home Videos was that the ones they picked for like the three were never the funniest ones. Like the one that would win like the twenty thousand dollars for the show. It was like, dude, there was like the one where the guy fell on his balls. It was funnier than the, the you well, know. That's, that's subjective. It could. There's be, always <laughs> it's always somebody like something's falling on somebody's head <clears> or they're like. Slipping, slipping, and slipping and falling, oh, just about to say or slipping. like a cat or a dog doing but something. But it's funny. never anything like totally gruesome, like, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You never see somebody like get their leg ripped off, or yeah. they Ooh. snap their leg. And Hope half. he's okay. It, no, you don't see it though. Like they must, they must. Be, I mean, I've heard Bob Saget talk about it, and he said some of the stuff that they would. That people would Get send in, in. they'd be like, "We can't, we can't use that." That's- <laughs> <laughs> they do the uncensored version, and you know, if Bob Saget's not going to use it, like it must be pretty bad. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, all right, that's all we got for the show. Make sure you follow us at MojoBreak underscore com on Twitter for our breaks, MojoBreak M on Twitter for our content and the hype. Uh, as well as mojobreak.com for any of your breaks. We are live seven days a week where all of our breaks are scheduled and guaranteed to fill. So you can go right on our website and see when things are breaking, what spots are available. Very makes it very easy rather than paying a breaker, sitting there and waiting for the break to fill for weeks. So uh, it doesn't happen here at mojobreak.com. So, and we're doing all varieties. C Rad's got a how many box mixer on, on Friday? 50. 50 box basketball banger, all high, mostly all high end. I mean, there's like. Uh, 19, 20, or 18, 19 prism in there, right? Yep. So 18, prism 19 hobby. hobby. There's, there's a hobby of, box. There's not a lot of breakers out there that have 50 boxes of basketball laying around. That's a good Luka. point as well. Oh, okay. that's nice. the only ones I usually oh, have. Luca, nice. maybe a black gold Luca. Could you imagine? Oh, um, 17, 18 flawless is in there. I mean, yep. it's it's an insane break. A 1920 NT. Mm-hmm. So uh, spots are already moving. So get get in on that. It's called the uh, holiday or Halloween. Halloween. Uh, NBA mixer and it's at Friday uh, Friday at 8 p.m. So jump in on that. See Rat See Rat's birthday over the weekend as well. That's right. Yeah, it turns so 22 years. That's old. why I did it on Friday instead of Saturday because, like, I would love to do a 50 box mix for you guys on my birthday, but I got some kids at home that probably want to see me on my birthday. So I was and like, uh, and see you on Halloween too. See <laughs> yeah. so Rat dose. turning 22. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Forever <laughs> young. <laughs> Next year is your Michael Jordan year. Forever young. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we'll uh, we'll see you. Uh, stay tuned for the breaks coming up here shortly, and uh, we'll catch you next week on the hype. Peace. Uh-huh.